All right, we are continuing to set up our new Focus website, and in this video, we are going to look at how to refine the, the small elements that display in your templates. So to illustrate this, uh, what we're looking at here is a, this is uh, the home template, which is synonymous with the blog template. So this is a, uh, just a generic blog style homepage where you've got links to your most recent posts. And we have names for these individual elements. This is a headline. This, this whole thing is the byline. There's individual items that display within the byline, author name, published on date. You can add uh, updated date. Um, you've got number of comments. You've got a link to edit the post. This here is a uh, WordPress featured image. This is, a, uh, this is a manual excerpt. It's not a classical excerpt. It's a topic for another day. But bottom line is you have these individual items. And with Focus, you have control over all of the things that display. So this is the way it displays by default, but maybe you don't want the author name, for example, or maybe you don't want to display a published on date, or maybe you don't have comments. You get the idea. You have total control over these items. You can control them from dun -dun -dun -dun, the content and display page. Now, the way this page works, and I've talked about this in a couple other videos, it really happens in two parts. The top section is the display options. It's how you turn things on and off. Uh, within your templates. So like you don't want the tagline to display, you can turn that off under global layout elements and it will disappear on all your templates. But the purpose of this particular video is I want to show you how to manipulate the items that appear on specific templates. Okay, and like I said, we looked at the blog template here, so we're going to look at some of the items that we have uh, for our blog display. Uh, all this stuff is going to be encompassed under this section of the display options, posts and pages. And I want you to note that when we turn things on and off up here, we may also turn on or off items down here that can be edited. So for example, if I was to remove the author name from the blog template, blog and home are synonymous, remember, so if you see home down here, just think blog. Uh, if I were to remove the author, then this particular item would be removed from these links at the bottom. Uh, some of these can be configured. I'll just dive into this one and show you what the options are. So like for the author, see it says author and then uh, the name of the author of this, this post. This introductory text right here is defined here. So you could change this to whatever you want. Guy who wrote this. And we could link the author names to archives. We can no follow the author link for SEO purposes. Let's just see what happens. Oh, so now it says guy who wrote this and it's linked to my author archive. Okay. So you see, you got some, some options there down, down at the bottom. That's what, um, that's what these items are for. Uh, the bottom, the links in the bottom half uh, of the, content display page are for extreme refinement of, of what displays. So you see how that works. But up here is really where the magic happens. And these items are separated according to uh, template types that are similar. So blog and archives are presented together because this is a blog page and here's a basic archive page. They share the same thing because uh, they share the same properties because you know the blog page is showing your recent posts, so it's showing multiple posts on one page, and the this is an archives page. This is doing the same thing. It's got links to multiple posts. Now, obviously, the display of this is different than the display of this page right now. I will show you why that's the case, but. Uh, the bottom line is the blog page and a typical archives page, they're sort of the same because they display items from, you know, uh, content from multiple posts on the same page. Now, that's why blog and archives are presented together. So we got tons of options here. Uh, right now, we are the blog page is using a classic presentation style, which is to show, you know, headline, byline, an introductory or, or you know the entire post if you want or I, I break mine up into manual excerpts so that the whole thing doesn't display at one, at one time uh, but we can change that we can use a list of links style and that's actually what is being used by the category page by default I just find this uh, works better for browsing and uh, you get more click-throughs on a page that's presented like this an archive style page that's presented like this versus one that has the full post formatting uh, 
sort of neither here nor there, but uh, this makes your site tighter and quicker to, to use it this way. So anyway, we can change the blog presentation style to a list of links if we want. And then that will change it to a list of links. Now it's a you know, pretty big difference right there. Um, and we can also add a text box before the blog post. And now we have a text box up here and we could uh, then edit the text box down here and put whatever we want in here and save it. And then when we check it, we will have whatever we want in there. So you could have uh, like an introductory pitch, like an author bio, you could put whatever you want in there, but this is an interesting way for you to kind of take control over what displays on your homepage and the information, uh, to take control over the information you give people when they land on your site. Uh, while still having your normal blog output, you can kind of put some introductory content in there if you want. So that's pretty neat. That's just one of the many things you can do here. But like I said, we turned on the text box up here. We hit save. And then when the page reloaded, we had the ability then to edit the text box down here. So we're going to undo that. We're going to go back to where we started. And we're going to look at these other granular options. So this little section here specifically covers items that appear in the byline, which is this this stuff that I already alluded to earlier. We can add stuff like an author avatar. We can remove items that are already there. You have total control. For the content, that's this part. We can display full content with read more excerpt capabilities, which is how I like to run my stuff. We can only show excerpts or we can show nothing. We can just get rid of it. So I'll choose nothing. And now our blog page is just headlines, bylines and featured images. So obviously that's going to, you know, produ produce a different vibe on this style of page and you can uh, you know, get granular with these options until you get exactly the output that you want. That's cool. Uh, got control over the WP the WordPress featured image. If you want to nuke those for whatever reason, you can. And then you also have uh, control over the way the archives appear. So like I said earlier, this archive is currently using the uh, the list of links display style, but you can have this behave exactly like your blog page just by setting the archive style to blog. And that makes both of these types of pages respond to all these settings that you have here. So that's interesting granularity there. So that's how you control the specific elements that appear and how they appear on your um, blog and archive style pages. The next type of page on every WordPress website is a post. So you got a blog post. So this is an individual post page. It's typically headline, byline, WordPress featured image, and then content. And so when we go over here, within posts, we have control over every item in the byline, and then we have control over other items as well. Um, you can add an author description that will appear after the post. We'll do that and I'll show you what that looks like. And also previous next post links. We'll see what that is as well. This is not the best example page because it doesn't have comments on it, but we're going to go to this one that does. Okay. So we added an author bio, which appears here. You can control the text that appears in the author bio by going to the profile within WordPress, the user profile, you scroll to the bottom, this is the author bio. Okay, and then the, uh, the avatar image is actually pulled from the Gravatar universal avatar service, which is separately done. It's associated with your email address. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that. That's how you can control the author bio content. It's good for multi-author sites. Uh, and then at the very bottom is this previous and next post links that I just enabled. This is sort of a uh, legacy blog feature. I don't recommend using it, but I did want to, you know, illustrate what it does. So that's what that is all about. We will turn these back off to reset it to the defaults. Okay, so that's posts. Pages are similar. Now pages just are not, uh, pages don't have an inherent chronology in the same way that posts do. Uh, and so they're not presented in like a blog. Each page is just an individual destination. Uh, this is the most classical expression of a web page is a, is a WordPress page. And we've got different types of pages 
within Focus. We've got basic pages, which is what we're looking at. And then Focus also includes custom, uh, special custom templates that are designed for specific purposes. Um, like I said, we're looking at a basic one here, but there's also a focus page and a readability page. Uh, now, this website is currently running in focus presentation mode, mode, which we, or pardon, readability presentation mode, which we've covered in an earlier video. Uh, but let's say I have a page on this website that I want to present in focus mode with the content centered because that uh, somehow is, is better suited for the content on that particular page. Well, on that page, on the page we want to display that way, we might deploy the focus page template. And because this is a special page on our site, we may want granular control over what appears. We may not want this to be exactly like a basic page. We might want it to be its own thing. Actually, it is going to be, whatever you choose for basic page is gonna get extended into the focus and readability pages as well. Uh, focus has been out now for over a year. Not that many people are really using the focus and readability pages. They're, they're, they're just there for flexibility, but you do have control over the items that appear in them through this, this mechanism right here. Uh, you're probably gonna be using this for your basic pages. Like I said, this is a basic page. Like for example, I don't really particularly care for bylines on pages. So I might, uh, if this were my site, I might remove the author. I would keep the date because right now the date for pages if we go right here, post box page, and click on date, we can see that the individual display settings for the date are, it's not displaying anything. But what actually happens here with the, the date, the date is an important item for SEO and also for a markup schema, so it's sort of related. And what Google and other search engines are looking for here are the presence of, at a minimum, these meta tags that are invisible to anyone browsing your website. Uh, these meta tags will tell crawlers, search engine crawlers, machines that are looking at your website, gives the uh, crawler extra information about the origin of this page. This page was originally published in 2007 because I've been on internet forever <laughs> and it was modified in 2020. So that stuff doesn't appear, uh, but because, uh, because, the date is included here, and because this particular expression of the date is said not to not to show anything, all it's doing is showing the invisible stuff and not the visible stuff, because we have turned the visible stuff off. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so we'll go back at it here. So anyway, if this were my page, I'd probably kill the author and the edit link, and that way no byline would display here and it would be real clean. And then there's other items too, such as the WordPress featured image. If there were one, it would be displaying. And then you can add an author description to your pages as well. There's two other very distinct types of pages that are, are different in Focus. And one is the front page. So if you are running a static front page in WordPress, you've got your static home page, you, can, you have granular, granular control over the items that appear in this, just like the other, other stuff front page, you can get rid of the headline altogether. These options are a little bit different for the front page because we know from experience that people have different desires for how they present this particular page. It's a special page, so it has a little bit different stuff that applies to it. So you can get rid of both the headline and the byline, just uncheck all of these. And then you have the other options like we talked about, featured image, author description, that kind of thing. And the same goes for the focused landing page. Now let me show you what that is. So a landing page, notice how this is just a regular, this is their static front page. It's got a nav menu. You know, it's, uh, it's got all kinds of stuff on it. It's, it has all of the elements uh, of, you know, all the basic website elements on it. The landing page, the focused landing template does not have any of those things. There is no header. There is no site branding. There is no nav menu. There is nothing. There's not even a footer. This page is, is a, a hardcore landing page where you send people traffic to this page. There is one goal for that traffic, some sort of conversion, a sale, an opt-in, something like that. So, uh, you know, the landing page template is unique and you have unique control over the items that display here. And there's a lot fewer options because there's a lot fewer elements that display on that page by default. But again, granular control is the name of the game there. That's what these options are about. This little section right here, posts and pages in your display options, is how you can exercise 
super finite control over the items, the elements that appear on each page of your website. Okay, and this, this covers the, the different page types in WordPress. The blog and archives, they're sort of related. I've already gone over that. You've got posts, you've got pages, and then on posts and pages, you have the ability optionally to display comments, uh, and you can choose to show them on posts and pages, either or, and then you can also, um, you know, control the way contents, uh, comments, pardon, display as well. So we'll look at that real quick. So you can see comment author, comment date. Uh, and so we've got comment author, comment date, and then you can also add an avatar in there as well. I don't recommend adding avatars because it does take time to load images. So on any page that has a bunch of comments, a lot of images are going to load. That's really going to slow down that page. Uh, for that reason, I don't recommend using uh, comment avatars if you have a lot, if you tend to have a lot of comments on your pages. But anyhow, granular control, that's the name of the game. This is how you control what appears on your templates. And once you have nailed down exactly what you want to display in your templates, only then should you proceed with uh, what we think of as classical design customization, like changing fonts, changing colors, uh, that type of thing. Once you have all your elements in place, you will then be able to go make design changes and know that you are seeing like the final outcome. You're getting really good uh, feedback from the changes that you've made because you're looking at basically the, the finished product and you are just tweaking it uh, you know, to, to your you know, specific tastes. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Let's focus together.